Hello, we're going to talk about ankle arthritis and uh, indications for ankle fusion. Ankle fusion is a um, the gold standard uh, treatment for people with post-traumatic arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, or a deformity of the ankle. Um, not responsive to conservative care. I mean, this is the end of the line treatment for people with severe arthritic pain of the ankle. Now, how does arthritis in the ankle happen? Well, you could have rheumatoid arthritis, which is an inflammatory uh, joint disease where your body attacks its own cartilage. That's number one. Uh, you could also have post traumatic arthritis. Let's say you fell down from a tree or some kind of industrial accident and uh, you injured your ankle joint or your heel bone, etc., and you end up getting. Uh, injury to the cartilage and your ankle wears down over time. You could also you could also have a, a deformity in, in the ankle. Let's say you have a undiagnosed uh, let's say ankle ligament uh, laxity such as uh, you're very athletic, you play a lot of sports and you injured your ankle 10 years ago and you have an unstable ankle. Uh, the joint is not congruent or not exact and um, you start wearing away your ankle joint sort of like uh, an uneven break on an uneven rotor. You, you're going to wear it in an uneven pattern and things are going to wear out a lot faster. Uh, anything, even even a one millimeter shift in uh, difference in the the ankle joint itself with uh, ligament laxity can, um, can cause advanced arthritis in the ankle joint. Now this is the this is the foot bone. This this is the bone called the talus. This is the bone that articulates or connects to the ankle bone. Down here is the subtalar joint, right about here. That is the joint underneath the uh, talus bone. Uh, you, I'm going to show you my uh, patient X-rays, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. You'll see it more on the X-ray. I just want to show you that uh, this is a nice, uh, supposed to be a nice area of cartilage uh, on top of here nice area of college down here. Now some people have pain they think it's coming from the ankle. I, I get that uh, miscommon, uh, common uh, misdiagnoses. Uh, a lot of times the patient or even their their primary care doctor will say, hey, you know, you just have some ankle arthritis. Come and take an x-ray and this joint is shot right here. It's not the ankle joint. That's good news because that is not the ankle joint. That is what we call the subtalar, S-U-B-T-A-L-A-R. Uh, that joint is actually in the foot and that joint can be easily fused. Uh, this topic, this video is about arthroscopic fusion, which uh, we're able to do this via a small uh, camera, uh, about four, mm, four millimeter size camera, as well as another uh, equipment called a shaver or an osteotome, which is a chisel and hammer, and about four millimeters in size also, so we're not doing a big incision, not causing a lot of collateral damage. There's a lot of benefit to doing it this way. Uh, number one, there's uh, la minimal bleeding. There's also... Um, less chance of complication of a wound infection, wound dehiscence, and uh, patients heal a lot faster because of the less uh, collateral damage that we are creating as a surgeon when we're going in and doing these fusions. Um, there's also fixation methods now that are done uh, percutaneously or meaning that uh, it does not require us to open um, the patient up in order to put this in. We can do it through the uh, x-rays live x-rays that we can use in the operating room called uh, fluoroscopy. So uh, I'll, I'll show you the case. Uh, we're going to talk to the patient. You'll get to see uh, what, a patient, what the patient looks like at about two weeks uh, post-op and about four weeks post-op al along with his x-rays. We'll discuss a little bit more. Thank you. This is an actual uh, pre-surgical uh, x-ray of uh, an actual patient of mine. Uh, you can see the joint space narrowing where the arrows are pointed. The ankle joint is the one on top. Uh, and then the subtalar joint is the one the bottom arrow. Again, this is a side view. This is what it typically looks like on the x-ray. This guy has more uh, ankle joint arthritis than uh, subtalar joint arthritis, but they're both uh, very arthritic. Uh, what you don't know is uh, a CT scan was ordered and it confirmed uh, such. We're going to look at the final view. This is the uh, rod. You see the rod in there and the, the screws. That is what's holding it in place. As you can see, at four weeks out, uh, fusions already started to take place. The mending of the bones has started to happen. Uh, this is a patient status post uh, ankle and subtalar joint arthrodesis via a uh, scope approach, arthroscopic minimal incision approach. This is the outside. This is a swelling at two weeks. This is an angulation at two weeks. Slightly plantar flex uh, for purpose of the ankle fusion. Right there, it's at 90 right now. Right here with the forefoot going back up. We're going to go around this side. This is the marking and incision and the insertion point of the inter 
the iron rod, intermedullary rod, and this again is the medial side. So this approach is uh, using the uh, two small incisions on each side right here for the ankle, and then this incision for the uh, access to what we call the subtalar joint, the joint underneath the ankle. So this whole complex is fused into one solid, one solid unit from here down to here. And the reason why we do that is for um, severe uh, end-stage arthritis, not responsive to any uh, kind of uh, conservative care. So you can see the swelling is very minimal and uh, very happy with the, with the swelling. We'll go ahead and this is two weeks right now, so not bad at all as far as swelling is concerned. 78 year old gentleman with severe ankle arthritis and subtalar joint arthritis done via the arthroscopic approach. This is the uh, lateral portal of the ankle arthroscopy. This is the uh, subtalar joint uh, portal. Uh, we're talking about um, just three weeks out of surgery right now. This is where the IM rod was inserted. This is still the marking from the striker rod. Rod incision is all healed up. This is the medial incision right now and we're going to go back. This is the one of the insertions for the uh, calcaneal screw of the rod. Uh, patient, uh, this, is the, the, this is the leg incision. Leg incision. Um, so a lot of this stuff was done arthroscopically and with uh, fluoroscope. Patient is uh, rehabbing well at the rehab facility. And uh, this is the position of a subtello with ankle scope. Um, the, uh, there's a 90 degrees perfect, exactly how we want it. So he's going to be non weight bearing for about 12 weeks, uh, usual protocol. Put in the cast, immobilization, allow for uh, proper healing. Uh, increase in healing rate secondary to not having to do an open incision. And as you can see, the incisions have all healed. How much pain have you had? throughout this whole thing. Not too much? A lot? Oh, well, originally quite a bit. Okay. Uh, For how long? But recently, in the last week or so, not much. In fact, I've had to take pain medicine because of arthritis in the shoulders and the knee. Okay. I can't straighten this anymore because of all the effort I was putting on it to uh, raise myself. So you have more pain in the knee and your shoulder than your uh, <laughs> than your ankle that we just yeah, showed you on three is. weeks ago. Right. So good, good, good. Uh, I think you're healing right on target, my man. We're going to get you another cast and go on from there, sir. Okay. Okay. This is the pre-op film again from the uh, front view. Now that you've seen the patient, uh, this is the x-ray before. Before, again, you see the arthritis, the joint space narrowing, it's hardly any joint space left in the ankle joint and moderate uh, joint narrowing there. This is uh, the rod in place and the patient in perfect alignment and fusion started.